Hey guys, welcome back to the two-part series on scheduler in your Squarespace site. I'm Elizabeth Muller, founder of Bloom Creative Company. And if you missed part one, go back and watch it because we covered a lot. I talk about how scheduler is just the secret weapon of Squarespace and we walk through how to set it up. And in this video, we're gonna refine what we did and just show you how to get the best use out of scheduler and just to save you the most amount of time so you can make more money and get the financial freedom or whatever goal you have for your business uh, accomplished. So let's hop on the screen share and we'll wrap up the two part series. This is part two of our walkthrough. In part one, we went through scheduling and set up our availability, our appointment types. We added a, an a, <laughs> a content form for collection of intake questions when and during the booking process, and we walked through how to set up this scheduling page on your site for the appointments. So we're going to pick up where we left off, and I want to just refine a few things here and, and scheduler because there's a lot of things that you can do with it, especially if your appointments require a face-to-face, -face, like over Zoom. So that's what I do in my appointments. I, I have the booking automation. I have the booking button on my site that says book a discovery call, which goes to scheduler. They pick the time, they fill out the intake question, and then they're sent a link through Zoom. In integrations, you can find, I mean, scheduler integrates with so many different things. Here's your Squarespace. If, if you're not within the inherent scheduler on the site, if you're at acutyscheduling.com, all sorts of email platforms, Facebook, everything, as you can see, CRMs, all the things. You would set up Zoom here. So you would connect to Zoom. <laughs> so you would connect to Zoom and you would allow it to transfer all the information, you'd authorize it, and it's going to open up a new window, and this is where you're going to choose the appointment types that you want associated with the Zoom. So I definitely need it for my discovery call, I would need it for my yoga flow class that I'm teaching, and then you can, you know, there's other Zoom settings, you can able, enable to join before the host, set a personal meeting ID, uh, which I would recommend. So it creates a new one each meeting. So if your meeting is running long and another person pops on, you don't have that embarrassing, awkward uh, situation. And you can start the meetings without video. So you'd hit save. And now you're set up with Zoom. So easy. So I had a Zoom account already set up. So if you don't have one, it would prompt you to set one up. But when you need to change... The settings on that again, it's just here, integrations, click edit, and this is where you can add meetings. Let's say you created new appointment types and you need to enable Zoom form, just make sure you take that extra step to make sure it's here. But that is it for Zoom. Something else that I highly recommend doing, in the beginning when I first started this automation, now this was before COVID and before everyone knew what Zoom was, a lot of people really struggled with understanding that it was a Zoom discovery call. I personally like the face-to-face. -face. I think it grows a lot of trust. I think that a lot can be told meeting someone face-to-face. -face, it's the closest thing to being as human as possible, seeing someone's face and hearing them talk. So I, I've always appreciated that, but not many people really understood that it was Zoom or they weren't familiar with it or didn't have an account. So what I was doing is I would edit the email reminders that went out. In your email settings, there's a bunch of different emails that Acuity automatically sends out for you. So in the initial confirmation, this is what tells people, hey, your appointment is scheduled. What I usually do, I mean, I do this for every email. I'll insert an image and I'll put my logo in there just to make it look more branded. So I'll add my logo here. And then under here, where it says appointment scheduled for Susie Smith, I will put here, right above it, please note 
this is a Zoom meeting. And I'll put something like, I will not be calling you on the phone number that you provided. You will have to log into a Zoom meeting. If you don't see the Zoom link, please email us at hello at bloomwebsitedesign.com. And I make this really big and really bold, so it's really hard to miss. And I'll do the same thing in the reminders as well. So I will, I'll add my logo up here and then I'll add some text too. So you can change all this. I don't recommend it because this is how they're personalizing all of the appointment information that they set with you, the type of meeting, the time, the location. I wouldn't mess with any of this. You can always change the font if you want to. You can change the font family or the font size if you want it to be more on brand. I, I like to keep it how it is because it's super simple, clean fonts, white background. I wouldn't do too much that it would make it hard for someone to understand what's on the page, but this is essentially what they're seeing. They can change and cancel their appointment. They can add it to their calendar, all that good stuff. You can preview the template here, what it looks like. Super clean, looks really good. And again, I add my branding here and maybe a note here in the appointment. Again, this is a Zoom this is a Zoom call. It shows it here, but for some reason, so many people were just missing that, and I, I'm not sure why. So when you have those extra steps, so that way you're eliminating staying in a Zoom room by yourself for eight minutes and no one's appearing, and then you have to go back and call them and see what the issue was and just all that BS that comes with it. So if you just take the time just to set the stage best and make sure people are most informed, you're saving yourself a lot of time. So if you click through here, all your different email settings, they all look pretty much the same. And then something that you definitely want to do is sync with your calendars, whether it's Google or iCloud, Outlook. You want to make sure that you have those all synced and the reminders so you're not missing meetings. Super embarrassing when that happens. Just make sure you take this extra step. And one last thing that I want to show you that is going to make your life super easy when it comes to payment collection is here in your payment settings. So you'll have to integrate either Square or Stripe. You can accept PayPal. You can choose whether it's both or one or the other here. And you'll have to, once I click PayPal, it's going to ask me to put my PayPal email here. And this is where you can really get ahead of the game when it comes to charging because if you're booking appointments or services and people are not paying for them right away, this eliminates chasing after them. So whether you require a certain deposit up front, a dollar amount, whether payment is optional, do not allow payment online, payment is different for each appointment type. So here you can come down, you can require a deposit here. You can, and this, this will be 50% of the amount that you set on the appointment type. So let me show you what that means. Oops. So when we go over here to appointment types and we edit, this is that dollar amount here. So if you want to add a deposit percentage, maybe you take 50% up front, it will be 50% of, if this is web design and you're charging $500, which would be crazy low, but anyway, you would take 50% of that and in order to book that service or the appointment, they would have to pay through PayPal or Stripe or Square, whatever you specified to integrate. Now, there's a lot of other things that you can do here as far as add-ons or discounts. We're not going to get into that today. I just want to keep it super basic for you so you can just get in, make this happen, save yourself a ton of time, and then get on with doing what you do and serving the world. So if we, if we run through these really quick, maybe you missed the first episode. I recommend you go back and watch it, but let's just take, take a look really quick. So here's your appointment calendar. This is going to be your overview for the week or the day or the month. So if you have appointment bookings, again, I do discovery calls Monday, Wednesday, Friday. This will be booked up. And this is where I'll look and see which person has booked. And when you click on their name, it will open up a side window here that will show their intake form. So you'll see when they book the call, uh, their intake form questions. And if they, it will also show if they've talked to you before, which is kind of cool. So you can look through the past and see if they've booked an appointment before with you, or maybe they had a discovery call and canceled. Just information from that the system has accumulated of those people. 
come down here to clients, this will be your list of clients. So this is a test appointment that I did and here's Jane McTest, or I think Squarespace did this one actually. But this is where you will see kind of a Rolodex of all the appointments that have booked any sort of a an appointment with you. You can import or export the list. Under reports, you can, I mean, pretty self-explanatory, appointment reports, revenue reports, if you're charging for the different services you're listing on here, users, intake forms, which is really cool. So if you're asking, it's a great way to collect data. If you're asking what, what the pain points are of your customers and they're all in the same field or you're looking to learn more about them, run a report on those questions and then you can look through all the pain points and this might get too technical, too crazy marketing, but you could really look and see what the common pain points are and then you can adjust your website, shift from there and hit those pain points and that will most likely get you more bookings because you are solving people's problems that they come, maybe they don't know they have, maybe they can relate. Yes, I need to talk to that person. Book, tips, export. We have your scheduling page link, which we talked about in the last video. You can grab that exact link or you can pick from the drop down in your schedule, scheduler block on your site. This is where you can customize the appearance of what you're looking at in Acuity. Your availability, this is where you set your regular hours here. And then here, if you have modified hours on particular days, again, if you have a doctor's appointment or something and you can't make those hours and you wanna make them earlier in the day to cover for it. And then again, appointment types. This is where you're gonna add your new service or your new type of group class. Intake form questions, this is where you'll create new forms. We did the discovery call prep form on the last video. And this is where you can edit that to integrate with the appointment type. Integrations, this is something you'll have to look through and see what applies best to you. But Zoom, if you're doing you know, the yoga classes or the discovery calls that you want face-to-face, -face, anything that you want a video conference call with. Payment settings. Again, this is where we select what we wanna offer and email settings. Again, where you wanna add your logo, add the extra communication, just make sure people are thoroughly, thoroughly informed when it comes to booking with you and showing up to the meetings too. That is scheduler in a nutshell. We did it. Thanks guys for being here. And if you have any questions at all, please put those in the notes for me and we'll be happy to answer those for you. Thanks guys for being here for the two part series on scheduler and your Squarespace site. If you want other people to see this video and get a lot out of it like you did, please hit the thumbs up button and make sure you smash that subscribe button too so you don't miss another video that we put out in the future. Thanks again for being here. I'm Elizabeth with Bloom Creative Company and we'll see you on the next video.